Hello, friends. Thank you for joining me for the podcast. Today, we're celebrating three years on the Myopia Podcast. Welcome to the Myopia Podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining me for this episode. Uh, I don't know there's going to be a whole lot of meat, uh, mostly potatoes in this one, um, but uh, I'm excited to be able to share and celebrate with you that this is the uh, third year. We're starting the third year of the Myopia podcast. I don't know that I necessarily set out to do it this long, and uh, sometimes people come up to me and they're like, how are you still doing this? Uh, How do you still have topics? And quite frankly, I have more things to talk about than things that we have talked about. Uh, this journey started, um, you know, three plus years ago when we originally launched the Myopia podcast with the Optometric Insight Show, the OI Show, along with Mila Brujic, and then set it out on its own a couple of years ago, uh, three years ago, to be what it is now. And uh, the podcast has really come a long way. I continually have people coming up to me and you know saying that they're utilizing this information or that information and. Uh, Maybe more than anything, it's myself who has learned so much, getting to talk to the best of the best and the, you know, the most innovative people in the, in the world of myopia and uh, applying those things, adding my two cents to the topics that they're talking about. And uh, really, really just the wealth of information that we have gained and the wealth of information that the podcast has hosted and then pushed out is, uh, is quite daunting. I'm super honored to get to do this and to be a part of it. Super honored for the uh, for the sponsors that have been part of this as well that have uh, contributed to help um, you know help pay to be part of what we're doing and uh, and you know the, these things cost money I'll be honest with you um, I don't make a ton of money off the Myopia podcast but I do have a team of people who help with uh, some of the back end things getting things posted and you know putting some promotional information out there so super honored to get to work with those people as well. Today, I thought I would just share with you uh, a couple things about the Myopia podcast that have been uh, standouts for me that I've really enjoyed over the uh, over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, for instance, uh, we are, um, as of the time of this recording, we are at 86 episodes, probably by the time this is uh, out, we'll be at about 90 episodes. And uh, that is just daunting to think about. Uh, I can't imagine doing 90 podcasts, but uh, that's how many it has been over a three-year time period. Um, you know, I didn't really know whether this was going to be a, a weekly podcast, what it's turned out to be as in every other week. And then, you know, we have information on social media about prior podcasts and content that has come out. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about that. So what I wanted to do is talk about what are three or four of my favorite episodes, uh, where I learned something and it's really difficult to pick because, uh, five, six, seven through 80 are, uh, are also all my favorites. Um, but uh, let me talk about some of my favorites, and then I will talk about some of your favorites, uh, according to the limited metrics that I have of where you're listening most. And, you know, within a limited amount of time, who has really caught on what podcasts have been listened to uh, more than others. So let's dig into that. And so first of all, um, where I am most excited about with regards to podcast is uh, some some of the things from the the very beginning. Episode number two was with my mentor who really introduced myopia management into me with Patrick Caroline. And Patrick reviewed the history of myopia management, the advancements over the years, the uh, expertise. Um, He talked about kind of the storytelling that myopia management has been over the years as we've tried to come up with theories of why myopia management has been effective and why it has worked. And uh, I just love how Patrick uh, knows the legacy and the history of so many things. And, you know, I'm along the lines of, uh, if you don't know what history is, you're, uh, you're destined to repeat it. And so, um, I'm hopefully we'll repeat the good things of history and be able to push the bad things away. 
Um, number two is also a, a really early episode, and that was with Maria Liu, um, how they do myopia management in China. And, you know, we tend to look as an industry at, uh, at China as being this um, a place where they do so much myopia management. And the reality is that the number of patients that are treated in China is way higher than the United States, um, North America, and uh, and certainly around other parts of the world, although other parts of the world are doing really, really well. We also had Adele Jeffries from, um, from New Zealand who spoke to us about uh, myopia management in New Zealand. And I just recently came back from there and they're crushing it. Um, uh, Aif Vanderwert spoke about uh, myopia management in the Netherlands. And uh, we've had some other guests talk to us about different parts of the world. But Maria talked about myopia management in China, where it really got off the ground far faster than it has in, in the United States. And the percentage of myopia management is about the same as the United States. It's not catching on way better or way higher. It's just as a percentage of the myopes, um, there's a larger number of individuals. And so that was really, really uh, you know, interesting, the public health concerns, the initiatives, that are happening from a governmental perspective and so forth. And I think if you go and check out Maria's episode, you will love it. Um, everybody loves Randy Kojima. And uh, without a doubt, he is always somebody who, when he shows up, uh, he's going to draw a crowd. And Randy is certainly no um, no stranger to that. His podcast crushed it. Every time I ask Randy to be on the podcast or to do something with me, he's always so willing, but he's so humble. And, you know, I get the, from the perspective of if you're going to do teaching and you're going to teach, uh, you know, in front of people, uh, we're used to utilizing PowerPoints and not just using our words, but using slides and images. And as a genius in the world of topography, Randy certainly is able to do that. But even in this podcast, of using topography to predict myopia management success. He really, really crushed it in describing and showed us how with some of the studies that have been out, we've been able to alter our effective dose of myopia management in a really, really meaningful way. And then uh, we had episode number 73, Anita Gullamurray. She really spoke uh, about combination treatment, which is near and dear to my heart. I'm along the lines of the next two years of the most important years of any myopic child's life for the progression of their myopia. So we really, really need to be going all in. And she talked about combination treatment. We had an interesting dialogue, interesting conversation, some back and forth about when we should or when we shouldn't do combination treatment. And just a spectacular, spectacular episode. And then along with you, one of my favorite episodes, uh, transitioning into what is your favorite episodes was an episode that is uh, a little bit newer is uh, with Patrick Johnson and Mark Bullimore, where we talk about uh, atropine and formulation matters. And this particular one was uh, sponsored by Synexus, which uh, a proud supporter of the Myopia podcast and formulation matters. We're learning so much about atropine right now and just really bullying down some of those studies for us in talking about how when you formulate, you may not be getting what you think you're getting. Uh, and across the board with many different pharmacies, they're not all the same. Why is that? What is atropine? And why does it not work for some people, but it works for other people? That was a, a, a really uh, amazing episode. And also some of your top episodes. In fact, the number one episode of the Myopia podcast is episode, episode number 70 with uh, Debbie Jones. I did not think this would be a top episode. I really didn't. I didn't think that this topic would be so hot, but it is. It's red light therapy and myo making myopia standard of care. And Debbie and I spoke about red light therapy and how, you know, there's some concerns about red light therapy. And another episode that is coming out is episode 87 with Maria Liu, where she talks about red light therapy and uh, just a really interesting topic. Um, was down in New Zealand and they have some products available down there that we don't necessarily have in the United States and red light therapy is being used far more than it is here in the United States it is a really interesting topic and uh, you're not going to hear anything from me yet on promoting it. I think we've got a little ways to go on the safety side of things, especially with where some of the devices are at, but 
it is a hot topic. And then the second episode that has been most uh, listened to, um, according to my data, and I bring this up according to my data because I don't have reports from all of the uh, all of the places that um, things are listened to. So there could be some sway, but so just utilizing my minimal information um, is, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised with this one is Nick Despedita's. And if you don't know Dr. D, he is just incredible. He's talked about determining fees and then talking with your patients and something most people struggle with is determining your fees and then talking with patients and converting people. And he's got a myopia management practice is what he does. And so just an incredible man and an incredible clinician and somebody who really cares about kids and cares about clinicians and helping get them up to speed with what they're doing. Um, Paul Levine talking about axial length and making myopia management mainstream was also a, a number one. That was episode number 53. And then a uh, really interesting uh, Tom Aller, the invention and introduction of soft lens multifocals, a, a great topic as well uh, that really, um, really spoke to how we've come with soft, soft lens and soft multifocals, you know, with the introduction in the United States of my site is making myopia management more mainstream, which is really exciting. They've got incredible data, six years of data um, talking about that. We had an episode uh, or two with uh, Justin Kwan and uh, an episode talking about some of the studies on my site. And I'd encourage you to go check those out, uh, talking about where we've come from and, and how it's setting the stage for the FDA for some studies. Talked about some spectacle lenses on the Myopia podcast, and I'm excited as we evolve in that, as we launch Atropine, and we'll be uh, on the forefront of what's happening with that. And lastly, I want to announce, uh, depending on when you're listening to this, uh, that we have launched the myopiawebsite.com. So we have the Myopia podcast, the myopiawebsite.com, and the Myopia newsletter is coming out. And you can sign up for the Myopia newsletter on the myopiawebsite.com and uh, be uh, be hearing about new things that are coming, be hearing about perspectives, things that we've talked about on the podcast, which are really key practice management tips or clinical tips. And so I'd encourage you to check out the Myopia newsletter and you can sign up for that again at the myopiawebsite.com. And also uh, want to bring up that we are uh, launching the Myopia Workshop. Also stay tuned in the Myopia Newsletter and the MyopiaWebsite.com um, for information about the Myopia Workshop. This is going to be an intensive two-day workshop where we really, and it's a small group, get into the nuts and bolts of myopia management. The intention here is for only people who are interested in really going all in on myopia management, for offices who want to, you know, bring it in and do three or four or five patients uh, a, a month, great. I'm I'm super excited for you to do sixty people a year, uh, but really, I'm I'm looking to target people who are wanting to do one, two, three, four hundred myopia management cases a year or more, and then um, hopefully increasing by twenty five to fifty percent every single year thereafter. We're going to be talking about marketing. So, how do you draw those patients in? How do you convert your patients into myopia management? And how do you make it so no child is left behind? And that is the myopia workshop, which the first one likely is going to be launched in December of 2024. Uh, so whenever you're listening to this, but be on the lookout, there will be other myopia workshops and you can stay tuned to what's happening with that on the myopia website.com. And that's spelled out the myopia website.com and stay tuned with the myopia newsletter which i'd encourage you uh to sign up for and uh, some great tips and tricks into that if you've got any information that you would suggest that i uh look into and consider for the myopia podcast or any of the other myopia things please reach out to me this is obviously a, a passion of love that i i have for myopia and uh helping helping you hopefully be a better clinician um again i started this with the intention of learning and uh, it's been so valuable to me. But if there's any insights that I've learned along the way that I've learned with you, um, please let me know how those are and how those are going. And thank you for subscribing to the Myopia podcast. And uh, we're only beginning here with our three-year anniversary. Thanks again for joining me. One, two, three, four.
Thank you for tuning in to the Myopia Podcast. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review and don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes. 